What's up, everybody? I'm the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and last time we covered stage one of how kata came to exist, kumite kata. Now, it's time to move on to stage number two of kata's development. I feel like if things had stopped at stage one, us karateka probably wouldn't get so much criticism from other martial arts. Low-intensity partner drills have been the staple of martial arts around the world, and have always served as a way of easing beginners into more complex drilling and free sparring. Judo still maintains this type of partnered kata, as do many styles of koryu bujutsu. But there were certain historical developments which required the creation of solo kata. First, as we are all aware in these trying pandemic times, there are certain situations where it just becomes impossible to train with a partner. Tamano Sensei specifically gives the example of a monk traveling alone, perhaps for reasons of ritual abstinence and pilgrimage, or perhaps to evangelize their religion, in this case, Buddhism. Having a solo method of training in order to not forget your techniques during these long trips would have been incredibly useful. This specific example relies on the idea that Chinese martial arts were developed in temples, especially the Shaolin Temple, but it would still apply as an idea even if the originators of these martial arts were aristocrats, or ordinary warriors, or really anyone who regularly had to travel. The other primary reason for the invention of solo kata is that they make it even easier to remember a large number of unique techniques. Think about it kind of like trying to remember where a certain letter is in the alphabet. The context, and in my case the song, make it a lot easier to memorize than just simply referring to its number in the sequence. If I ask, what's the 15th letter of the alphabet? I mean, you might just know it offhand, like some sort of nerd, but for me it's a lot easier to think, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. But rather than just string together however many kumite kata, performing them solo saved a lot more time, since they didn't have to reset after every technique, and only had to do each one once, in one direction. According to Tamano Sensei's theory, these solo kata were essentially what you'd expect from stringing together one side of a drill with a whole bunch of other drills. Each technique was performed in the air exactly as if there were a partner there, without worrying about either the amount of time or space that would be necessary to perform the kata. I guess people probably needed more stuff to occupy their time back then before the invention of anime. Some examples of this type of kata, or more accurately form, still exist, especially in Chinese styles like Yang Family Taiji Chuen, and they are, to put it mildly, rather long. For example, the longest of Goju Ryu's kata is, generally speaking, probably Suparimpe. Suparimpe takes somewhere between 90 seconds to 2 minutes to perform, and is also structurally speaking probably the most repetitive Goju kata with three separate sections where it has a technique that's repeated four times in each direction. And since suparimpe means 108, let's compare it to the 108 form of Yang Taiji Chuen, which takes somewhere between 25 to 30 minutes to perform. Some of this length is definitely a result of it being performed somewhat slowly, but even so, I don't think that they perform each technique ten times as slow as we do. This second stage of kata development definitely has advantages and disadvantages when compared to the first stage of kumite kata. It would be reasonable to say that they were probably intended to be supplemented with kumite kata work as well, especially since many of the techniques therein are difficult to understand or even to perform without being well versed in how they would apply to another person in front of you. One of the other large benefits that it has is that these solo kata are much more structured than the equivalent solo practice method for free sparring, which would be something like shadow boxing. But, as Tamano Sensei points out, they do still take a long time to learn and a lot of time to perform, making them pretty inefficient, especially by modern standards. But, since there were clearly quite a few ways to improve this format, you probably won't be surprised that, in the next stage of kata development, a lot of those problems were addressed. At least, partially.